Welcome to a Henley Air tutorial with the Robertson 44 Raven 2. Starting off the Robertson 44. If you have an air con present, switch it to the off position. Your rotor brake should be fully disengaged. Map reading lights can be set to the off position. And your headset is plugged in tightly. Move down to your fuel valve. Switch it to the on position. Collector friction can be loosened as well as your cyclic friction. Test your governor by switching it off and back to the on position. Open your throttle and then fully close it into the detent and release for it to be back to neutral. Raise your collective and move the cyclic in a circular motion while moving your tail rotor pedals. Ensure that there is free flow of movement in all axes. Over here you can see your cyclic and collective inputs on the rotor head system, as well as your tail rotor inputs. Tighten your cyclic friction as well as your collective, and you can move over to your circuit breakers. Check they are all in. Your fire extinguisher should be present as well as in the green and your pilot's operating handbook is also present. Landing lights should be set to the off position and the hydraulic set on. Avionics should be all off. Your transmitter should be set to number 1 which is your primary radio in this instance. Fuel mixture can go full rich, magnetos are off, master batteries on, alternators off, clutch disengaged, strobe off and nav lights off. You can now see your fuel measurement and your amp reading. Your clock is functional, your aux fuel pump, alt and oil lights are on. You can move over to your directional indicator and check it with your compass and set it correctly. Your pressure altitude can be changed to 1013 and then back set to your airfield elevation. Pull out your attitude indicator knob and set it leveled. There should be no warning lights at the top. You can move over to your compass and check for deviation. Your temperature should be set to degrees Celsius and you can move over to the limits for the day with your manifold air pressure and your air speeds. Pre-start checklist complete. You can now fully prime the helicopter for about 4 to 5 seconds for cold start. Pull out your fuel mixture, fully close your throttle and release it back to neutral. Your rotor brake light should be off and you can switch your strobe light on. Close your door and check your surroundings before starting the helicopter. Your starter button is located at your collective. Engage it and wait for the helicopter to catch before fully putting your mixture in. You should now have oil pressure reading. Clutch engaged, alternator switched on. Your helicopter should be running between 50 to 60 engine RPM and your starter light is off. Rotor blades turning within 5 seconds. Oil pressure is in the green. And after some time your clutch light will go out. You can run up your engine to 70% RPM for the warm-up. Place your headset on and check for a tight fit around your ears and your microphone is placed close to your mouth for clear communication. To test hydraulics, loosen your cyclic friction, move it in a small plane and you can now switch your hydraulics to the off which should feel rough and then switch it back to the on position and move in a small plane. Tighten your cyclic friction. 
You can now switch all of your avionics on, starting with your transponder. Check it is set to 2600 for helicopters and move it over to mode Charlie. Switch your GPS on and your radio on and check frequency for the airfield you are at. Check volume as well and you can place your mixture guard on. Prior to doing the magneto test, check that all of your engine T's and P's are on the green, then roll your throttle up to 75% RPM. There should be no more than a 7% drop within 2 seconds. Test your left magneto and check for a drop, set it back to both, and then back to right and check for a drop. After your test is done, leave it on both. You can now do a spray clutch test. Run your throttle up to over 80% and fully close it, checking for a positive needle split. All your gauges should be in the green. Check your directional indicator and check that they're the same with the compass. Your attitude indicator should be leveled. Run your engine up to 100% RPM. Loosen your collective friction and raise your collective a slight bit. Close your throttle to 97% and you should have a low RPM horn. Transmit your intentions to the tower. Hatches, harnesses, and you can now loosen your frictions. All your gauges are on the green and warning lights are all off. You are now ready for takeoff. Shutdown procedure. Close your throttle into the full detent. Hold it there until it hits 80%, otherwise it will run up to 100%. You can then bring it down to 70% and hold it there. Tighten your collective friction as well as your cyclic friction. Once you have a positive drop in cylinder head temperature, you can bring your throttle fully down and then you can disengage your clutch. Your clutch light should be on and you can now wait 30 seconds before pulling out your mixture. Once 30 seconds has passed, pull out your mixture and your helicopter should stop running. Mags off, alternator off, avionics off, after 30 seconds you can engage your rotor brake. Mags off, master battery off, strobe off. Shutdown procedure checklist complete. Thanks very much for watching the Henley Air tutorial. Find us on Instagram and Facebook for more content.